Hi everyone! This tutorial is going to show you how to superimpose your designs onto products to create realistic mock-ups. This is useful when you can't physically make your products and this might be because you're working from home and you don't have access to facilities such as the t-shirt press or it might be that you've decided to create a billboard or a web page and that is something that you can't actually create and photograph. Um, so in this tutorial we're going to use a takeaway coffee cup and an iPad as an example but this technique can be used for any products that you are making. First we need to find images that we can use for our mock-ups. You might have images of a product yourself, in fact if you can use your own photograph that would be brilliant, especially if it's something that could be photographed in a relative way to your concept, but for blank products it is sometimes easier to just use stock images. Pexels.com, this website here, has lots of great free good quality stock images um, as you can see and you should be able to find something on here that is relevant to your product. Um, but if you can't, like for example, I can't find a takeaway coffee cup example on here so I'm just going to use Google Images. A good thing to do on Google if you are using Google Images is to use the advanced search option and choose images that are larger than 1024 by 768 and this is just to make sure that we have good quality images. Um, a lot of stock images on Google will be watermarked so they won't actually be usable but you should be able to look through and find something that is free and clear of any watermarks and therefore suitable for our mock-up. So this is the one I'm going to use, I'm going to just right click and copy it and then head back into Photopea. So I'm going to open up a new project in Photopea now and I'm going to make this document A4. If you're using Photoshop instead of Photopea this will be under International Paper. Uh, here on Photopea it's under the subheading of Print. The reason I'm doing this as always is to make sure that the resolution is high and that we're working on a good sized document. We can always crop this down once we get started if it's not the right size, not the right dimensions, but at least we know that we've started on a good size document. So let's paste our image now onto this document. If it pastes really small on your page, that is a good indication that your stock image is too small and you may need to find a different one to get something that is higher quality. Otherwise, you can make this a bit bigger if you like, but just remember to use shift as you adjust it. And don't make it too big uh, as you will risk making it pixelated. Once you're happy, you can crop this down to a composition that you are happy with. Now, make sure that your rulers are on. If they aren't on, you can use Ctrl and R on your keyboard to get these on. And now if we drag from the left, it will bring a vertical margin out onto your document. And you want to line this up with the widest edges of the inside of the coffee cup or wherever it is that your design is going to go. Do the same from the top ruler to create horizontal margins. Once you have done this, we now need to create a rectangle to fit inside this box that we have just made. It doesn't matter what colour the box is for now, either this is bright red, don't worry, that's fine, we'll change this later. First we need to convert this to a smart object. This is really important to do at this stage as it will allow us to place your design into the shape later on, so make sure that you do this now. We now need to warp our shape to fit inside the shape of our cup. Turn your opacity down to help with this so we can see underneath our shape. Now go to edit and warp and move each corner of the shape to match the corners of the coffee cup. As you start doing this you'll also notice that the curve at the bottom here needs adjusting so you can use each of these squares to create curves and make the shape fit to your cup. This may take a couple of minutes to get right but once you're happy with it click the tick and you can also move your margins out of the way now because we don't need those anymore. Turn your opacity back up and double click on your smart object. There should be a small icon on your shape layer indicating that this is a smart object. So double click on this icon and it will open up your smart object document. Your other document is still open, we can still go back to this, but for now we're going to be working on this shape one document for the time being. 
drag and drop in your design and you may realize that you need to adjust this now. You may have been working on slightly different dimensions as you created your digital designs, but this is absolutely fine. You can either make this bigger uh, using shift if you do want to make it bigger uh, within this document, or it might be that you have to go back to your original design document and adjust certain elements to make it fit within this new shape. You might be able to just change the colour of the background like I can do here, but it will be different depending on your design. If you do want to make it bigger, just make sure that nothing is chopped off the side and that you are using shift that, so that you're not stretching or distorting your design. Once you're happy with this, you can go to File and Save Smart Object. So we're not saving as a PSD or a JPEG, we're saving as Smart Object this time. And now when we go back into our previous document, we can see that that has placed our design into the shape that we have made. You may find now that you can see your design on the cup that certain bits need adjusting. So you might want to go back into warp now and adjust those accordingly to make sure that it fits your object perfectly. If this design had actually been placed onto the coffee cup in real life, it would follow the curve similar to the curve here at the bottom of the cup. When you're warping, you can use these squares in the middle to adjust this and make it look more realistic and 3D. Just make sure you don't distort it unnecessarily or make it look too warped though because we still want this to look realistic and professional. At this point, it still looks like a flat design that we have just placed on digitally. So to make this more realistic, we can use our layer blending options. This may differ depending on the stock image that you're using, but multiply generally works quite well over white images. And you can see here that it's allowing the shadows to show through and make our design look more 3D. However, it is worth trying out each different option to see which one works best for you and your individual mock-up. So there we have our finished mock-up takeaway coffee cup. I'm now going to quickly run through a more simple type of mock-up using an iPad as an example. This is the exact same process, but it will be slightly easier as we'll just be using straight lines and it won't involve warping to a 3D object. So let's have a go at that now. This time I'm going to get my image from pexels.com. I've chosen this professional looking image of an iPad and a phone. I'll just copy this and then open up a new document on Photopea. I'm going to use an A4 document again and if I click these arrows next to the dimensions it will actually change this from portrait to landscape for me which is really useful for the actual image that I've chosen. So I'll just paste our image now onto this document. I can make it slightly bigger but remember not to make it too big or it will end up pixelated. And always remember to hold shift down too when you're making an object smaller or larger. Once I'm happy I'm going to crop this now so that our image fills the whole size of the document. Once again I'm going to bring my margins in to the widest points of the screen. I'm just doing the iPad screen for now. Then once I've done this, I can create my rectangular shape inside of these margins. Once I've done that, I'm going to convert it to a smart object. Remember, it's really important to do this at this point. I can then turn my opacity down and distort it to fit the iPad screen. I'm going to use distort this time rather than warp. It is slightly easier when you don't need to make your object curved or warped like we did last time. This time all we have to do is match each corner of our shape to each corner of our screen. Now I've done this, I can turn my opacity back up to 100% and double click on the smart object symbol to open up our smart object document. I'll then drag and drop my design into here and adjust it accordingly. Once again, you may need to go back to your original Photoshop document to edit your design and make it fit better within these dimensions, or you may be able to edit it here by simply changing the background colour or making it larger to fit within the shape. Remember, always use shift when you are altering the size of your design. We do not want stretched or squished images. We are looking for professional looking designs. Once you are happy with your design, you can go to File and Save and save it as a smart object. Once you've done that, you can go back onto your iPad document and it will have appeared there.
We can now try adjusting our lead blending options like we did before, although multiply here does not work as well because there's a black surface under our design rather than a white one. Have a go at each blending option anyway and see which one works best for you. In this case it might actually be that you don't use a layer blending option at all and it actually just looks best how it is. So you might just decide to leave it as normal on your layer blending option. Once you are happy with your mockups you can save them as high quality JPEGs. It might also be worth saving them as PSD documents so that if you alter your designs in the future you don't have to go through all this again. You can simply open up this document, open up the smart object and place your new design in there. So there we have two ways to create professional looking mockups in Photopea and on Photoshop. 